Hi guys, so those lovely people over at WizKids recently sent me a box of goodies. And this is it. And it's full to the brim of little miniatures. And these are all from their Critical Role unpainted set. And I must admit, there's a, there's a big range of figures in it, and they look great. So we'll get a few of these out, and well, we'll paint a few up. So I have been watching Critical Role for about the past few few months, and yeah, absolutely love it. But I believe these figures are all from the uh, the first campaign. So I'm going to have to go back and, well, watch all, I think it's about 115 episodes <laughs> from the first campaign. So yeah, lots to watch, but the great thing is, when I'm painting these, I can just sit back, listen, and watch a little bit of, uh, of all the uh, the D&D campaigns, as I am now fully back into playing D&D, which is awesome. So yeah, it's quite a variety of figures here. Um, looks like there are some heroes and quite a few monsters, which is, uh, is always good to have a nice sort of balance of the two. And yeah, the figures, yeah, they do look really good. Nice bit of detail in there. Um, a few of these figures I've just seen have got like lots of chain mail, and they look pretty, pretty awesome too. So yeah, I'm just going to paint a few figures in this one. Obviously, to paint all of these will take me quite a while, um, which I will get around to eventually. But for this video, I'm just going to concentrate on a few. And I like the idea of doing this little beastie, uh, just because he's nice and large. And like myself, he's full of muscles. Um, yeah, <laughs> say no more about that one. Uh, yeah, nice looking figure. So uh, we'll crack on and paint him. And I'm going to go using the, uh, the speed paints that I got from Army Painter. And we'll see how they, they get on. So these figures are already primed and ready to go. And the great thing is on the back of the, um, the sheet that they come on, it sort of gives you sort of reference pictures of how they sort of should look. But obviously you can paint these however you want really. So I'm going to have a go at trying to paint it like it sort of shows on the back. And yeah, I'm using these speed paints, which is pretty awesome. So I'm still using my sort of paint straight out of the, uh, the pot uh, technique, um, right or wrong, who knows. And as you can see, obviously I've got my little uh, sprue built um, holder for it, which is pretty cool. Don't forget there are links in the description to everything I use in the videos. So yeah, go click on the links, check out the things, anything you'd like you see that I'm using. Um, yeah, go and give them a try. These miniatures are already primed and ready to paint on. Uh, but I was sort of noticing that the speed paints didn't seem to seem to adhere to it um, all that well. And in some cases, it almost seemed like it was all evaporating. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure if this is the kind of primer that's on these paints, or on these figures even. Um, but yeah, either way, it wasn't really sort of sticking to it. So I thought I'd uh, rub that all off, as you can see. Um, and then I'd prime them myself in the primer that I normally use for all the, all the paints. Um, and then try it again. And yeah, this time the paint, uh, well, stuck to it as normal. So, as much as these things are ready to prime, or, or primed ready to paint, um, it doesn't seem like you can use the speed paint straight on them. So you will need to sort of reprime them yourself. Um, but yeah, I did have a go at painting a few other figures directly with my normal paints, and they were fine. So it does just seem to be the, uh, the speed paints don't seem to like whatever primer these sort of come in. Uh, so that's no biggie, as obviously you just prime these how you sort of, well, you'd normally prime your little miniatures. But yeah, so now obviously the speed paint is going on nicely, and yeah, obviously you can really sort of see the definition in this guy's sort of muscles, um, and his sort of veiny looking bits. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm loving these speed paints, obviously I've only been using them for the last sort of two weeks, but they are just so nice and easy to use, and yeah, they dry and look like this, which is uh, pretty awesome. So I'm going to do the same again on the front with the, uh, the purple that I've got. Same sort of fashion, just sort of paint it on and then obviously let it dry. And yeah, one coat should be enough to sort of do the job. I have now almost finished building all the uh, the sets for my Tomb of Horrors campaign. So guys, if there's any kind of sort of sets you would like to see me build, uh, by all means let me know in the comments and I'll have a go at building them. Um, I know I have had a few people ask me to do a sort of like a wizardy kind of room uh, with like sort of pots and potions and all that kind of stuff. So I will be making one of those very soon. So one thing to be careful with the, uh, the speed paints is not to put too much on in one area in one go. And as you can see, that's kind of what I did here. So it ended up making the higher areas darker and the, uh, the, sort of the creases and crevices and all that kind of thing um, lighter. Which is a kind of the opposite of what you kind of want from the, um, the speed paints. So yeah, I thought I'd go over the whole thing and just do a little bit of dry brushing with obviously a lighter purple. And then that way, obviously, the, um, the crevices will be darker and the raised areas which will be lighter, which is obviously how it sort of kind of should be. So yeah, that was kind of obviously my fault. Again, obviously I'm kind of new to using the speed paints and all that, and I think I was a bit heavy handed, because um, I'm normally, I'm normally heavy handed when I use the washes. I do tend to put too much on. And I think that's what I did with the, um, with the speed paint, basically. 
but it didn't take long at all to finish off painting him and yeah I'm pleased with the results um, yeah a bit of shading going on there and yeah love him so he looks pretty cool so I'm gonna do a couple of these little bugbear guys um, yeah again I love the detail in these so these are the ones that have got sort of wearing chain mail and yeah the chain mail looks fantastic and obviously this guy the furriness on him um, yeah that looks pretty cool too so obviously say, there's loads of these figures um, I will be getting around to painting some of the others later whether or not they'll be in the videos I'm not too sure um, this was just obviously the first that will go just sort of show you some of the figures and obviously how well they can be painted uh, or well how, how well I can paint them anyway uh, whether that's good or bad who knows but I'll say I was happy with how these all came out and I kind of painted these at the same sort of time so basically I'll do one uh, use a sort of same brown on one and then on the other one and then use a darker brown on one then the other one and so on so with the silver bit of on one and the other and obviously this just speeds it up uh, makes it nice and easier to sort of paint a couple at the same time really um, yeah again sort of simple sort of paint painting on these just sort of the block sort of base colours um, and then I do use a bit of a wash later on but um, yeah as I say, I'm really pleased how these come out and these are definitely um, well I'll definitely be pleased to sort of show these off to people in any of the campaigns that I, I'm doing so as well as the several sort of D&D games that I'm sort of currently playing face to face um, I am also looking at doing some sort of um, campaigns um, online basically um, and I might actually be sort of um, streaming them as well guys if that's something you may be of interest to uh, watching me stream some sort of D&D campaigns so basically it'll be me and several other people um, but obviously I'll be using my figures and my um, all my buildings and sets and dioramas um, in the campaigns so uh, yeah let me know guys if that's something of, you might be interested in sort of watching um, and maybe even partaking in um, I think initially there's a few people I want to ask to see, see if they want to sort of join a campaign with me uh, but I'll also probably open it up to the patrons as well um, just to see if they want to sort of take part in a game um, but yeah so that's something I'm thinking about doing guys let me know if that's something that you would be interested in watching um, but um, yeah that may be coming up soon so yeah there we go that's um, them pretty much done now um, yeah again I'm, I'm pleased with how the paints have gone on so these army paint the paints I've been using again um, primarily sort of solely just army paint the paints for the last sort of I don't know month or so um, and yeah just loving their sort of D&D colour range um, there's loads of paints in that set and they all look fantastic and yeah so this is what I'm saying about me sometimes going over the top with the uh, the washes um, although I say I go over the top I go over the top but I love the the effect that it leaves um, as it really does make these look a bit more sort of grimy dirtier uh, a bit more natural realistic um, looking figures um, yeah so yeah I'm really pleased about these these two came out and yeah I'd love to use these in the campaign the only thing I don't like about these figures um, this is a small little gripe on my part I like obviously because now I'm using clear bases so I don't like figures that have any kind of sort of thing under their feet basically and obviously these come on like little sort of stands even though you then stick these onto other sort of bases um, yeah, so I say this is a small little gripe, and this is just me <laughs> being picky. That I, I want basically, I want all my figures to be on clear bases um, with nothing else on them. But the good thing is, though, with these, how these are made, these are it's a very sort of like softish um, kind of like model sort of thing, rather than being like a hard sort of resin. Um, these are it's somewhere between plastic and, and rubber, I guess. I and mean, I'm sure there's some clever people out there that know exactly what material this is and can leave it in the comments but um, but yeah I'm just saying it's somewhere between plastic and rubber um, so basically it means it's easy to cut is what I'm sort of getting at <laughs> uh, so yes yeah, so exactly what I did I went round and basically trimmed off the uh, the bases they're on and I'll probably do this for all of the ones that I, uh, I paint from this um, critical role sort of unpainted set um, yeah but say awesome figures look great um, go check them out so these are by WizKids um, and these are, I mean, they do a whole variety of stuff with WizKids, I, mean, I love their stuff uh, they do all kinds from obviously the figures and they do the Warlock tiles so you can make up your own sort of uh, sets which is pretty cool so yeah there you go, I'm, I'm pleased with how they came out um, yeah I've managed to sort of cut the bases off reasonably well um, I'll probably get a sharper blade next time because that will help and I did the same for the, uh, the big chap as well and yeah I'm pleased with how he came out so yeah they all look great um, just solely on these plastic um, sort of bases so yeah love them so guys check out all the links below uh, they'll show you where you can get these figures from WizKids 
as well as obviously anything else you can, can get from WizKids, as well as the paints I use, um, oh, basically everything I use. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I just want to say a quick shout out and thank you to all my patrons, as well as the sponsors for helping making it possible for me to sort of keep making these videos and obviously buying the materials I need to build stuff. So, yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Leave comments down below, hit the like button, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, take care. Bye for now.